the eye of a violent storm, two lovers lie side by side. Around them, a furious sea rages. The woman sleeps peacefully. The man is awake, but tense. Nothing really can prepare you for the impact of this painting that seems to get you in the grip of some extraordinary feeling that seems to overtake you. This picture is called The Tempest, and it was painted by Oskar Kokoschka in Vienna nearly 100 years ago. Today, it's acknowledged as one of the great expressionist paintings of the 20th century. Everything, the brushwork, the composition, above all the colours, make you think that this is a picture about highly charged emotion. It's about much more than meets the eye. The story behind this painting is of a passionate, intense, wild and bizarre love affair between the rebellious, impoverished artist who painted it and a wealthy older woman. The emotions they felt for each other were the affair's downfall. They were too strong and too destructive, I think. It was a very destructive affair on both sides. is one of the prized possessions of the Kunstmuseum in the Swiss city of Basel. It's a large painting, nearly two meters high and over two meters wide, and it's strategically placed, glimpsed through a long line of open doorways. The woman in the painting is Alma Mahler, one of the leading figures in Viennese high society at the turn of the 20th century. In later life, Oskar Kokoschka said, The tempest showed me with a woman I once loved so intensely in a shipwreck in mid-ocean. Oskar Kokoschka was born in 1886 and grew up in fin de siècle of Vienna. At the time, the city was one of the most vibrant artistic and cultural centers in Europe. It was home to artists like Gustav Klimt, musicians like Arnold Schoenberg and Gustav Mahler, and the founder of psychoanalysis, Sigmund Freud. Oskar Kokoschka studied at the city's School for Applied Arts and soon established himself as one of the most exciting and innovative young artists of his generation. Oskar Kokoschka uh, had a a rather high uh, reputation in the avant-garde circles and established a reputation as a, a rather uncompromising artist who established a language of his own in artistic terms. Hand in hand with Kokoschka's undoubted talent as an artist went a fierce rebellious streak. In one defiant gesture, he shaved off his hair to cock a snook at Viennese bourgeois society. Kokoschka is, is an angry young man at that time, and he tries to be an imposing person, judging from the photographs you can see at that time. Sometimes he appears as a very elegant person, and it doesn't really fit with uh, shaving his head at the same time. Uh, so. It's a mixture of a dandy, maybe, and a skinhead. Kokoschka's reputation as a Viennese skinhead even reached the ears of the Archduke Franz Ferdinand, heir to the throne of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. He announced that he wanted to break every bone in Kokoschka's body, seeing him as a dangerous rebel trying to undermine the established order and the bourgeois culture of the time.
This Viennese bourgeois society was Alma Mahler's home turf. She was a charismatic young woman and something of a celebrity. She was the eternal feminine. She was the most feminine, soft, beautiful person who was able to give men of great talent the feeling that she knew them down to the very core of their souls. On top of that, she could create an electric shock across a crowded room if she looked at a man. She was a compulsive flirt. She simply couldn't help it. Young Alma's introduction to the pleasures of the flesh began when she was kissed by Vienna's greatest artist of the time, Gustav Klimt. She was warned off the notorious womanizer for the very good reason that he probably had syphilis. But Alma was never short of admirers, and at the age of 22, she married the celebrated composer and conductor Gustav Mahler, 20 years her senior and the first of her three husbands. She did draw men really like a magnet. Even when she was married to Mahler, she had, well, at least one affair with the architect Walter Gropius. Um, so much so that Mahler, who found out about this at a certain point, sought the advice and no doubt consolation from no one, none other than Sigmund Freud. In the 1960s, Alma's adventurous love life was celebrated in a ditty by the American songwriter Tom Lira. The loveliest girl in Vienna was Alma, the smartest as well. Once you picked her up on your antenna, you'd never be free of her spell. Her lovers were many and varied from the day she began her begin. There were three famous ones whom she married, and God knows how many between. Alma. Oscar Kokoschka was, in Tom Lehrer's words, one of the men between. He and Alma first met less than a year after Gustav Mahler's premature death in 1911. As he approached this house in a suburb of Vienna on the evening of the 12th of April 1912, the young Oskar Kokoschka could not have known that within a few hours his life would be turned upside down. It was here that Oskar and Alma were introduced. She was intrigued and to break the ice, she asked if he'd like her to play the piano for him and she sat down at the piano and played Wagner's Liebestod. And Kokoschka was instantly struck. While she seduced him with her playing of Liebestod from Richard Wagner's opera Tristan and Isolde, Kokoschka made a little sketch of her. The affair started almost instantaneously. It was quite unusual, I think, even for Alma to be so there. I think they were lovers within three or four days. It was a, a white-hot attraction. At first sight, Oscar and Alma must have seemed an odd couple. Even Kokoschka acknowledged their differences when he wrote, I was an immature youth with a tendency to run full tilt at brick walls, and she a woman of 30, accustomed to luxury and always surrounded by men. Their affair was to last for three years, and during that time, Kokoschka made hundreds of drawings and several paintings featuring his lover. He wrote over 400 love letters and was desperate to marry Alma. But he was also an intensely jealous man. When she went to the, to the opera or to the, to the concert and, and to meet friends and so on, he was always jealous. There is a, it's a nice story. He went away from her house in, in the middle of the night and he didn't go home. He stood in the, in the garden before the house and waited that nobody comes in because he was jealous. Who comes after me? 
His jealousy was, was a horror for her. And she didn't trust in her. Maybe he was right, I don't know. And then Alma fell pregnant. Kokoschka could not have been happier, but she had other ideas. She checked into a sanatorium and had an abortion. This says a lot about the way in which she viewed the relationship. And I, I don't think that he ever forgot it or forgave her entirely. There's no sign, however, that at the time it fatally damaged the relationship. But there were happier times. In the spring of 1913, Alma and Oscar travelled to Italy, ending up in Naples. They stayed in a hotel overlooking the bay and Mount Vesuvius. And while they were there, a significant event took place. The lovers were caught up in a violent storm and took shelter in a grounded boat lying near the seashore. The memory of protecting the vulnerable Alma must have lodged in Kokoschka's mind. The holiday over and back in Vienna, Alma made a dramatic offer to her lover. If you paint a great masterpiece, I will marry you, she said. Kokoschka took up the challenge with the intention of creating a painting that would stand forever as a symbol of his intense love for Alma. Kokoschka began work on The Tempest in April 1913. It would be his biggest painting to date. He shut himself away in this building in Vienna and, to put himself in the right mood, he took the extraordinary step of painting the walls of his studio black. Alma found this and her lover's strange mood extremely disturbing. She decided it would be better if she didn't see him quite so often. Looking closely at the broad brushstrokes and the thick layers of paint in the Tempest, it's easy to imagine the intensity with which Kokoschka worked away, alone in his gloomy studio. It's as if he's pouring all his highly charged feelings onto the canvas. At first it seems to be just a mass of flailing brushstrokes. And you're very aware of the paint and of the movement of Kokoschka's hands and of the marks that he makes in this very emphatic, violent way, all over the canvas. He lets the paint have an extraordinary life of its own in the middle of what is, after all, a pretty ferocious picture um, that seems as if it's been painted at full tilt. But something happened as Kokoschka worked on the painting. It seems that his feelings about the relationship with Alma began to change, and to reflect this, so did the painting. In his preparatory drawing, we see two lovers close together, and Kokoschka wrote about his work in progress, we look very strong and calm in our expressions, holding each other's hands. But in the final painting, the lovers are apart, and they are not holding hands. And early on, the Tempest was referred to as the red painting. The Tempest certainly changed uh, in terms of its colouring, to start with. And if you stand in front of the picture, you see glimpses of this uh, strong, heavy red that originally was characteristic of the whole composition. Red, of course, uh, as a colour, has the connotation of passion, of love, of strength.